we're back for another show of Simple Meals. Today we're gonna make a dragon fruit salad. That's what we're making today. And you know, I should bring the mic up here. Um, I, there's no recipe today, okay? It's usually, sometimes we'll have a recipe, okay? But again, I'm gonna show you how I typically make meals, all right? I, I don't really follow recipes. I look at the ingredients I have, all right? I know what ingredients make a good salad. I put them together. I've had enough experience, right, of understanding, okay, how much, how many tomatoes, how much dragon fruit. But also sometimes you just got to use your intuition. You just got to, you know, eyeball it and have some fun with it, all right? And you learn over time, all right? This lifestyle can be very simple. It does not need to be complicated. As long as you have the ingredients in your home. So when I go to the grocery store, I don't buy a bunch of ingredients based on, oh, wow, I'm going to make this recipe and that recipe. I just buy a bunch of ingredients that I know I need for the week. And I just, they just come together and, and meals just, just happen. All right. And the, the, the foods, when you buy large amounts of the right ingredients, green light foods, they just, you, you, they're on your shelf. They, they, if it's ripe, you put it in your fridge. If you need to freeze it, you freeze it. There's really no stress here. It's super chill. I really want all of you to have an amazing, healthy relationship with food that's not stressful and you love every meal and it just feels simple. Like that's what I want for you guys. It feels easy. It feels graceful. I've been doing this over 16 years now and I don't have to think about it. It's just my lifestyle and that's what I want for you. Hopefully this show and these recipes are not even recipes. These simple meals are helpful for you. So I want to apologize for being a few minutes late to starting the show. It's usually supposed to start ex exactly at 1 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday. It's been one of those days. I think I had one of those days, a show on the episode where I talked to you about figs. But here we are. I made it. And I'm going to grab all the ingredients from behind me. And we're going to have fun making a salad. As always, ask your questions in the chat box. I will answer as many as I can at the end today. And as always, I'm living with type 1 diabetes. I will talk to you about my blood glucose levels during the show. My Apple Watch tells me that I'm at 96 minus 12. And just so you guys know, I get the minus 12 from an app called SugarMates. Maybe I should show that to you. Hold on. Maybe I could plug that in. Hold on a second. Let's get the phone in on the show today. All right. Let's do this. Here we go. Plug this in. And let's go to SugarMate. It's a fantastic app. Okay, SugarMate. Here we go. We got that up. And let's see. Is that going to work? Boom. Oh, now we're... See, I'm starting to feel a little low. I'm like, eh, I think I should do something about this. 86 minus 10. And remember, see that at the top? You see that arrow? At neck, to the right of the 86 at the top. And then to the right of the arrow, it says minus 10. So in the past five minutes, I dropped... Uh, 10 points, right? So, um, I like this, that number makes me happier. Okay, so um, I'm going to eat some of this dragon fruit, right? Now, let's actually bring this back over here, okay? So a very, dis this is a key insight, all right? A disciplined decision right now, I'm going low, right? Would be to eat one date, right? Because I know that's the exact amount to treat the low. So I should do that. Hold on a second. Let's just get that started. I bought some more dates today at the store, so I should eat one date, all right? No, that should be fine. I could eat two to be conservative, you know? I'd rather be high than low, but you know what? Let's do that. I'm going to eat two. See what happens. And then, um, I want to know, is anybody else watching the show? Do you, are you, like, are you living with diabetes? If you're living with type 1, write T1. If you're living with type 2, write T2, write pre-diabetes, T1.5, gestational diabetes, non-diabetic. I want to know. Everybody watching, where, where are you at? What's going on? Okay? All right. Now, back to what I was saying. Okay? The, the decisions on, look, in the past, so a decision that I've made in the past that didn't work out so well would be... I'm making my lunch, right? I'm putting together a meal. I'm feeling a little low. I got I to eat something, right? To correct the low. And the less disciplined decision 
will be to just start eating some of the dragon fruit, right? So I'm cutting up the salad, I'm making the dragon fruit, just like start eating the dragon fruit, just like eating and eating. That's how you easily overtreat the low. And then now you're high and now you're on the roller coaster. So it's disciplined decisions that prevent that from happening. I just made a fairly disciplined decision just saying, you know, I know exactly how much coming grams of carbohydrate ate. I should wait about 15 minutes and then we'll reevaluate. Okay. We'll, we'll reevaluate together on the show. Uh, that's better than just kind of like snacking haphazardly. What I could do is if I really wanted to have the dragon fruit, I could take the dragon fruit and I could understand about how much of this would be 15 grams of carbohydrate. I'm so used to using a food scale. I don't really even know anymore these days. I'm not very good at eyeballing. So theoretically I could like, I could either number one, get better at eyeballing, or I can cut up the dragon fruit, put it on the scale and then eat specific, you know, a specific amount of carbohydrate. These dates, these are medjools. So I basically probably had a little bit less than 30 grams of carbohydrate. That's basically what I just had to treat this low and we'll see what happens. We'll have some fun. All right. So in the chat box, I'm seeing the answers. I see uh, these are fun. I love the answers, guys. Um, mostly type 2 is what I'm seeing here. Mostly type 2, some prediabetes. I saw a type 1.5. I don't think I saw a single type 1 in here. There's no type 1s watching this show right now. If you are, come on, let me know. All right, but I love all you guys, okay? Glad to have you here. So um, here we are. Let's uh, start talking about our salad, all right? Okay, we got, let's go to this can. Okay, we have, I don't need this. All right, we're just going to take some arugula. We have arugula. This dragon fruit comes from Miami fruit. I love Miami fruit. Uh, enter the discount code Mastering Diabetes. Save 5%. Um, they're amazing. So that's where I got the dragon fruit. Um, and we need some other ingredients. So let me go grab them. Hold on. Uh, going to get tomatoes. So... Versus there's just tomatoes sitting on the shelf. I'm going to put some tomatoes in this salad. Um, what else? How about some green onion? Let's do that. All right. Okay, I don't think I have green onion. That's fine. We're going to survive without the green onion. Now, the next ingredient I'd love to add is I'm going to add mangoes because I'm most – this is an important lesson, guys. We've got to talk about Okay. Most people, including me, you're not going to have enough dragon fruit to make a meal. You have to understand which fruits are so low in their calorie density or for whatever reason, just aren't that enjoyable to eat in large quantities that you're not really going to make a meal out of them. Very few people are going to make a meal out of dragon fruit. It also would be very expensive. Usually you just don't have enough dragon fruit lying around. And so this is not going to be only dragon fruit in the salad. We're going to get majority of our calories from the mangoes. Okay. You'll see that on this show. I'm putting mangoes in just about everything. All right. So we're going to have mangoes. We're going to have dragon fruit, tomatoes, and arugula. It's going to be a fantastic salad. No recipe. No, not too much thought. Just walking in the kitchen, putting some together. So here we go. Let's go get some mangoes. I got some on the shelf. Hold on. We got three mangoes. We just grabbed ourselves three mangoes. I can do that on this camera. There we go. These are Keats. I mean, Keats are on fire right now. They're so good. So good. All right. So uh, let me get a bowl and we're going to make this salad. Um, super fast. Let's see here. Let me get a bowl. I got a bowl. Hold on. Okay, we're going to put everything in this bowl because maybe you can see it better. All right. So um, I hope you guys are having a great day. I see that. It, Bess, is there any like simple questions I could answer like real fast? Maybe put one of those on the screen. I'll try and answer questions while putting this together. I'm from Florida, non-diabetic with, with many friends who are. Love you guys and all the help you do. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm in Florida too. Where can I get the cookbook so I can reverse type 2 diabetes? I'll tell you what. I tell you what, it's the, it's the Mastering Diabetes book. It's right here. Uh, it's right here. Boom. This book has over 30 recipes, two 21-day meal plans. This is the book to get to reverse type 2 diabetes. Get it on Amazon. We read our own audio book. It's fantastic. Okay. 
So that's the answer to that question. See, now my watch is beeping at me, right? It's giving me updates. It keeps on, tells me now I'm 72 minus 4, but I think we're going to turn the corner, okay? So we're going to tear the scale. We're going to take arugula, just take this, and we're just going to put it in, okay? Now, we don't... It, when you're using chronometer, like it's worth it to put in these ingredients just so you can see your overall nutrient intake when you're using this software. These aren't this. I'm not really entering this to to because there's a significant carbohydrate content here, but we're gonna do it anyways, or we're gonna we're gonna enter it in. So there we go. Seventy eight grams of arugula. So let's go to this screen first. Let's get chronometer up. Okay, here we go. Let's look here. Lunch, add food, arugula. Okay, 78 grams, add, boom. Okay, back over here. Next up, I am going to, let's do the dragon fruit. The dragon fruit is fun. I got to get a knife. Hold on. All right. If you've ever had dragon fruit, write D in the chat box. If you've never had dragon fruit, write N. Okay, let's see. What do we got? Have people, have people had dragon fruit? We'd love to know. Okay, so this is dragon fruit. This is a yellow one. The yellow ones are almost universally white on the inside. It's a beautiful fruit, absolutely beautiful fruit. Now these ones can sometimes be white or red on the inside. This one's happened to be that happens to be red. It's an extraordinary fruit. It's it it you know when you get a good one, the Miami fruit will send you a good one, and the flavor is as good as it looks. Like sometimes dragon fruit looks better than it tastes, right? And it's a little disappointing. But when you get from Miami fruit, like you're getting the best of both worlds, all right? So I need to get a compost bin. I really want to get that, um, that bowl on the shot. Hold on one second. So this is, uh, this is my compost bin. I was pissed off in the compost bin. But I want to move this over, okay? Move this over. What do we see? Do we have a lot of D's or do we have a lot of N's? Nope, never, never. I think it's almost, uh, probably a little more N's than D's. I would say like 60, 40. Let's see, okay. That's a little better, okay. All right, this is our compost bin. This is not that beautiful. All right, so here we go. We're gonna keep cutting the dragon fruit. It's very simple, all right? You don't eat the skin, right? You do not eat the skin. And we're going to put our dragon fruit in here. Very easy to prepare this. This is dragon fruit would be another fruit that when you go to the store and you buy it, it's pretty much ready to go. It doesn't really have to ripen. So this is, a, again, think about it when you're, when you're traveling and you're looking for produce that's sort of just ready to go. Um, dragon fruit would be, would be one of those. You just buy it and you can eat it. This one actually doesn't look good, so I'm not going to eat that. This one, this one went bad. That happens. Don't worry. That's part of the produce game. Um, and you can just tell the grocery store you bought it from, hey, look, that piece, that one wasn't good. So I need a refund. That's fine. Now, to locally, if you're not going to get dragon fruit shipped to you from Miami Fruit, you could buy it from like an ethnic market would be a good place. But pretty much every normal grocery store has dragon fruit these days. It's definitely become popular. And so has this yellow dragon fruit. Um, somehow, some way, they made this pretty widely available, which is amazing. Now, um, I want to know, has anybody here entered dragon fruit from South Beach? I'm in South Beach, too. That's amazing. Um, if, I want to know if, you've, if anybody here has entered dragon fruit into chronometer, if that's something you've done. Let's see. Okay. Because... Um, I entered in a weird way, like well, I'm, trying, I'm going to show you in a minute, but if there's a better way, I'd love for you to let me know. If you enter dragon fruit into chronometer, tell me. All right. So that's, that sounds like enough. So we're going to put this in here. All right. This feels like enough dragon fruit. putting it in, Just dump it in the bowl. Now, there we go. We did it. We cut up dragon fruit. We got 336 grams. So here we go. I'm going to show you how I 
enter this into drag into chronometer. If you have a better way, you're going to let me know. So we're going to go here. All right. Add food. Dragon fruit. Okay. It says dragon fruit blend. Then there's also whole foods. You know, so I, I always enter dragon fruit blend and it's see on, on the far right, it says CRDB. So this isn't coming from the USDA nutrient database, which isn't ideal, but we got to work with it. And I'm just trusting the numbers. So 338 grams, 338 add. All right. So we got our dragon fruit. We just got that taken care of. Now it's time to cut up some mango. All right. What would a salad be on this show without some mango? These are Keats. Oh my gosh. If you guys could sell them. I mean, I just, I have no words. I mean, that it is unbelievable how good that smells. Wow. Like the sugar content is so on point. It's so there. This is ripe, ready to go. Boom. We're just going to put it in the bowl just like that. Super easy. All right. I mean, that is so juicy. It's like squirting everywhere. Now, today I put on my apron because I'm actually wearing like a nice shirt. <laughs> I thought I'd try not to ruin that. So what questions do we have coming in best? Let's see if I can answer a few questions while I cut up this mango. All right. My protein blood work is always abnormally low. What foods would help to increase to improve muscle strength? Okay. Well, that's two, two different questions there. Um, you're talking about your muscle strength. But you're also talking about your, the, your blood work. So I would, if there's something going on with protein on your blood work, I recommend booking an appointment with a plant-based telehealth. Okay. I think you should talk to a doctor and figure out what is going on with, with protein in, on your blood work. So plant-based telehealth, amazing organization we've been working with for many years and they will help get that straightened out. So you got to address that. And if you want to improve your muscle strength, you have to understand that your activity in the gym is what's most important there, right? Of course, you have to have adequate protein intake. Absolutely. Like we can make sure that happens and making sure you're using chronometer and get really confident in that. But you, you have to be doing the right things in the gym, like period, end of story. So there's no way to gain, you know, muscle without the right activity. All right. So uh, start with plant-based telehealth. Make sure your blood work is right. Make sure your nutrition intake is right. Your energy is there. And then start training properly. All right. Okay. Next question. How do you know if it's good or bad? How do you know if it's good or bad? So, okay. So you're talking about, uh, okay. So you wanted to know what was wrong with that dragon fruit, I think is what you're asking. This particular dragon fruit has like a black spot here. And I tried to cut around it. And I wasn't satisfied with what I was seeing even when I tried to cut around it. So I decided it's not good. Uh, I would just take a picture and then I would uh, take it to the grocery store and then I would, um, I would either get a replacement or I would ask for the money back. I would just get the replacement. That's what I would want. Um, so take a picture of what you bought, take it to any grocery store and be like, Hey, the dragon fruit was bad. I want a new one. They'll give you a new one. Now, as far as when do you know they're ripe, basically every dragon fruit at the grocery store is going to be pretty much ripe. You want it to have a little bit of give, a little bit of give for that dragon fruit and uh, it'll be ready to go but that's a fruit that you probably want to store in the fridge it could go bad like um i think pretty quickly okay all right what are the questions we got here we're just put, cutting up the mango right now i already used the decision tree but my carb ratio is always all over the place from one day to the next i know that it can vary meal to meal but when what can i do today to avoid highs and lows okay kimberly um, I try and give you some more information here. What type of diabetes are you living with? Let's start there. But basically, let's just go for with some generalized information. If your um, carbohydrate to insulin ratio is all over the place from day to day, and it's getting, let's say it's just getting really frustrating and that's happening. The best thing I would encourage you to do is for about a period of two weeks, Try and keep, make your life as consistent as possible, okay? <laughs> try and reduce the variables that could make that fluctuate and try and hone in, okay, what is my actual ratio at various times a day? So type 1.5, okay? 
So that's one thing, reduce the variables. The other thing we got to focus on is, are you, um, is your basal rate in the correct place? Because if your basal rate is off, like all bets are off and it becomes very challenging throughout the day to dial in your ratios. So in our book, we explain exactly how to do a 24 hour fast. 24 hour fast is great for people living with um, any form of insulin dependent diabetes. Could that, that could be insulin dependent type two, that could be type one, could be type 1.5. A 24 hour fast is basically essential and required in the transition process to make sure your basal rate is dialed in. So we gotta start there. And I just wanna say, first off, Kimberly, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're filling out decision trees. That's amazing. Um, you got to pat yourself on the back and you got to understand, you got to just give yourself some compassion. The transition process is not easy. Okay. We wrote this in the book, right? There's some up, there's some down, there's some, there's some challenges. You know, it, I would love for you to join our six week challenge and you could work with one of our coaches and they would help you do this. Um, you can learn about that on our website. Just go to masteringdiabetes.org slash start. And you can talk to an enrollment specialist. We'd love to help you. But with that said, number one, we got to get the basal rate right. Number two, you got to reduce the variables. If your ratios are all over the place, reduce the variables so you can um, start to gain confidence and then, uh, then adjust over time. Okay. All right. Next question. What do we got? Where can I get protein from? I used to be a heavy meat eater. Okay. Kiel. So here's the answer to that question. There is protein in all whole plant foods. Okay. And all the essential amino acids are included across the board as well. So the, where do you get your protein from? You get protein from eating whole foods. All right. I'm going to show you that this salad itself is going to have protein. Right. So that's number one. If you want to start to focus on reaching a certain specific quantity of protein, maybe because you're being active, maybe because it's just really important to you, then you can use nutrition logging software and you can, you can start playing around with that. There are certain plant foods that contain more protein, right? They're higher in their percent of calories coming from protein. And those would be foods like beans, all right? So peas would fit in that category, lentils would fit in that category, quinoa is a higher protein whole food and you could start focusing on those foods if that is important to you but i would say step one is you, you'd be surprised first off how you need less protein than you think you need and how you are actually getting more protein from whole plant foods than you thought you were getting that's a typical experience all right so what you got to do is you know do what i'm doing here like i'm showing you i'm making a simple salad Okay, 804 grams of mango, all right? And I'm showing you how to simply log this, all right? So let's go to the other screen. Add food. Mango. Okay, mango, here we go. Uh, I said 804, eight, no, no, sorry, 804. So that's 6.6 .6 grams of protein from the mango, all right? This whole meal, has 11 grams of protein so far, all right? So we're getting protein from whole plant foods. Now, let's go back here and let's put in some tomatoes in this salad. All right, next question. Hopefully we, we took care of the protein. We have plenty of resources on that topic. It's everywhere, you can Google it. Uh, you can read it in our book, you'll be just fine. Type Pattaya Plus Organic. Okay, that's a good idea. Now, Pattaya Plus, um, is that, we're talking the whole food. Okay, let's actually, let's play this game real quick. All right, add food. Um, Pitaya. See, I think that's a brand though. So I didn't spell it right. Pitaya. Oh man, it's, it's automatically fixing it. That's the problem. See, it's still a, it's still a chronic CRDB. But maybe it um, has more detail than what I'm doing. I'm going to take, I'll compare this later on to compare the nutrition details provided by this company versus the one I'm using. But I appreciate that information. I appreciate you. All right. Okay. What are the questions we got here? 
Now we're putting in tomatoes. Oh man, see the alarm. See, it just told me. It just said, can you, can you see that? Can I get my watch on the screen? Probably not. It said I'm 62 and going down. So I should eat another date. Why don't I do that? Hold on. What do I do with the dates? I think I put them back here. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay, we're gonna eat another date. Spot these are organic medjool dates. You know, I'm really, I'm always trying to play that time and range game, right? I'm trying to keep in range. And I should have had three dates. See, I played tennis this morning. And uh, the ratio that I used for my lunch meal should have been a little lower, right? That's why I went low. But it's okay. Clutch is life. Here's the thing. My... Um, my alarm's beeping at me. Um, basically, I think when I'm below, I think beeping when I'm below 90, I think. I have to double check what my alarm is. But the fact that I had the alarm beeping at me early, definitely, the fact that I ate those dates earlier than the fact that when I'm low is definitely preventing my t my the, the amount of time I'm spending with the low blood glucose here. We're trying to reduce that. And that's the goal. So now we're just simply putting in the tomatoes. I will say this salad would be a little bit better with a little bit of green onion. Any type of onion would be great in this salad. Okay, any type of onion would be great. All right, I have been following MD for eight months with great results. Last week while out of town, I had very limited options of what to eat. I now know to better prepare. So this week I'm struggling with a fasting bug glucose of 102 to 110. How long does it take to get back to the 90s? It's been at. Also, will this impact my blood work? Renee, um, first off, kudos to you that you've been following the program for eight months and you've been getting great results. I'm happy to see that. It's great. You had a little bit of a blip when you were out of town. You learned some lessons. You're going to do better next time. You're going to be just fine. I would say give yourself another week or two of being really, really on point, really on target. And... Um, and you're gonna see, you're gonna see yourself back into the 90s. I would also do do my best to increase activity, right? So you want to increase your activity to help compensate. Uh, you'll be amazed at what activity can do for improving your blood glucose control, improving your fasting blood glucose. And it's a big part of the Mass with Diabetes program. It's a big part of our challenge. When people join our six week challenge is increasing your activity. Okay. It's a big deal. So we actually provide you with a bunch of workouts you can do from home and they're designed to lower your blood glucose designed to get your body moving in the, in the, in the right way. And it's super, super fun. Okay. What are the questions we got? Let's see what else I can answer while we're here. I have had dragon fruit, but, but the best I've had was grown in Guam. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. But I will tell you, Miami Fruit does an amazing job of sourcing high-quality dragon fruit, particularly uh, the yellow dragon fruit, which is this one right here. It's really amazing. But I'm glad to hear you've had it. All right, so tomatoes, 256. Let's go over here. Add food. Okay. Tomatoes. 256. All right, so 177 grams of carbohydrate, 13 grams of protein, four grams of fat. That's a solid meal right there. Remember, guys, we want to keep every meal under 10 grams of fat. Do not ha have more than 10 grams of fat if you want to maximize your insulin sensitivity when, and uh, stick to the mastering diabetes method. So we've put together the salad. Here it is. All right. Now what we'll do is we will mix it together, all right? We're gonna mix the salad, all right? I gotta get a fork. So here we are, it's another simple meal, guys. This is a legit meal. I will eat this entire salad today, absolutely, no question. And we're just gonna mix it all together. And as always, you know, people are asking, you know, what type of dressing do you use? There is no dressing necessary when 
you are consuming super ripe, delicious fruit. This thing just keeps beeping at me, man. Okay. Um, so here we go. We don't need this anymore. We don't need this. We don't even need this anymore. Okay. There we go. This is going to be amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Now, when you're low, like I, my blood glucose is low, I feel like just eating this entire thing. I, I would just want to go crazy and eat this whole thing. But that, and, I, and theoretically, my mind is like, you know what? Like, just start having some of those mangoes, you know? Like, just start picking at it and go like that, you know? You know? And that mango is extraordinary. Wow, that's delicious. But that is not an ideal decision. Because then, see what I'm saying? This is very important, nuanced stuff here for people living with insulin-dependent diabetes. But right now, if I start eating this salad to try and treat the low, number one, it's hard to know exactly how many, of, how many grams of the carbohydrate of the actual salad did I start to consume. You don't really know, right? You're just like, you're hungry. Your body's just like, give me some carbohydrate. I, I, I want to survive. That's, that's what your mind is telling you. That's what your body's telling you. And I got to get the dragon fruit in here, right? You got to see the dragon fruit. Um, but see, that's a problem because you don't really know how many grams of carbohydrate you're using. It's much more disciplined to know exactly how much you're eating. And then if I start using part of this meal to treat the low, then I don't know exactly what to dose for when I actually eat the meal. So the more disciplined decision is to treat it separate from the meal. Okay. Like take care, like, like I did, I took care of the, I took care of the low with the dates and I just added another one. Okay. And then at some point I will decide, okay, I'm going to eat this meal. I will dose my insulin for the meal and then we'll be good to go. Okay. So there's the salad right there. No dressing necessary. Not that again, I got no problems with dressings Use them to your heart's content, but Ripe fruit is a dressing, okay? So um, let's see here. We'll go back to the calculator or the phone. 177 grams of carbohydrate. I would do 177. I mean, with the whole tennis thing today, I would do a 45 to one ratio. I would inject four units. I would inject four units for this meal. That's what I will inject to eat this. Um, I'll probably wait to confirm that the dates have gotten my blood glucose to a stable level. And then I will enjoy the salad. So this was another fun show. We're already at 40 minutes. It's taken way longer than it should to make the food. Let me try and do a rapid fire on some of the questions. We'll get out of here in, in no more than five minutes. Okay. So let's see what we got. Joining late is that arugula. I don't use much arugula too peppy. So this is arugula. You could put spinach in here. You could use romaine. You could use the uh, super greens, which I have in my fridge, but I love the peppiness of arugula. So swap it out. No problem. Simple meals. Keeping it simple. What do we drink besides water? Tea. Okay. Let me tell you something. Let's go over here. Tea. Drink tea. Amla green tea. This is hibiscus. I love it. Uh, we have uh, oolong green tea plus amla in our, our, our the original amla green. But drink tea, tea and water. That's all you need. And you'll be loving life, maximizing your insulin sensitivity. All right, what do we got next? I'm just scrolling across this. Can you explain your program? My daughter is 10 with type 1 diabetes and one and a half, uh, T1 diabetes, year and a half. Okay, so she's had type 1 for a year and a half. I got you. Also curious, what type is this focused toward? All right, well, uh, Teresa, great to have you here. The best thing you can do is pick up a copy of the book. Okay, start with that. It's a New York Times bestselling book, Mastering Diabetes. Both Cyrus and I, we are the co-founders of Mastering Diabetes. We wrote the book together. We're both living with type 1 diabetes, and we've had our lives transformed. So that's the best place to start. We have a, a kids group. So in the comments, I'll make sure a team member replies back to you and you can get the kids group. We have uh, a Facebook group with just families and kids focused on type 1 diabetes for children. That would be a great resource for you. Um, but really, understanding as, as a parent of a child living with type 1, 
it's worth it for you to invest the time to understand the idea of reversing insulin resistance for people living with type 1 diabetes. Just the concept of how do I maximize the insulin sensitivity in, for my daughter now and how can I set it up for success long term? This is what this book is all about. Why is that important? We have a video that is very popular. It's called Insulin Resistance Diet, <clears throat> What to Eat and Why. It's a one-hour lecture that can help you understand this. I'm sure in the comments, the team can provide that for you. But um, that's the answer to that question. All right, what do we got here? Um, will you post the recipe? Okay, um, probably not, okay? <laughs> this show is called Simple Meals. Here's what I did. I can, let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. I put in like 80 grams of arugula into this bowl. Then I put in, what was it like? Call it, let's just round up the numbers. Call it 80 grams of arugula, 350 grams of um, uh, dragon fruit, also known as pataya. Then I think I call it like 800 grams of mango and then call it like 250 grams of tomatoes. That's, that's the recipe. All right, boom, there you have it. Okay, now if we want to get exact, we can go over to here. We can go to chronometer, all right? And you can see, so 78, 338, 804, 256. Those are the exact numbers because I'm living with type one diabetes. I put in the exact numbers so that I know exactly how much insulin to inject, all right? But the, the recipe is arugula, dragon fruit, mango, and tomato to your heart's content with an emphasis on more mango to provide you with the energy and calories you need to thrive, okay? So if you just had a salad and all you focused on was arugula, tomatoes, and dragon fruit, you're not gonna be satisfied. You're gonna be hungry. Matter of fact, you'll be starving an hour later. And you'll tell yourself the plant-based diet doesn't work. I don't have enough energy. I don't get enough protein, okay? If you're not eating enough calories, that's really the only way to not get enough protein. So you got to focus on the calorie dense green light food. That's a huge part of our program. When people come in, they're in our six week challenge and we're coaching them. We are teaching you how to eat more food. People have a little bit of a resistance to increasing the volume of their food, to increasing their carbohydrate intake. And we guide you through that and show you how that will actually lower your blood glucose, how that will actually reduce your weight. Okay. That's what the mastering diabetes method is all about. Check us out. Okay. Let's see, 145. So one more question. I love your meal plan to have it. That's amazing. So Paula, you, you can also, you could buy our meal plan. We're going to ship you, not ship you. We're going to email you a shopping list and recipes for the entire week, every single Thursday for an entire year. It's called our weekly meal plan. It's absolutely amazing. When you join the six week challenge, you also get a very special six week meal plan, which is designed to help you become more insulin sensitive very quickly it's designed to help you avoid super high blood glucose readings as you're coming out of an insulin resistant state. That's what we do in our six week challenge. Okay. One more question. Then we'll call it a day. If there aren't, maybe we answered them all. So we're good. Okay. Last one. My neighbor's grandchild swings from 20 to three in 10 minutes flat. Uh, those are Canadian measurements. Okay. I offered for her to borrow uh, our book for as long as she needs. She refused. Okay, Gina, I feel you, I hear you. Uh, one of the most challenging parts of doing this lifestyle is seeing other people who could benefit choose not to benefit. It's one of the hardest parts of really getting it and seeing the results in your own body. The best thing I can say to you is keep going, keep thriving yourself, any goals that you have, you know, take a look at what things might potentially be happening in your body that like an outside person would say, oh, like, this person could be doing X, Y, and Z. Like try and, you know, take care of the things on your own end first, right? But just keep on thriving, being an example. Sharing our resources is amazing. Like that's the best you can do. Like share the resource, see what happens. But at the end of the day, be an amazing example. Invite, make, be so healthy, so vibrant, so active, so clear thinking that people are just like, what are you doing? And they come to you. That's the goal. All right, so we'll end the show on that. Thank you so much for everybody for being here today. I really appreciate it. Tell your friends, tell your family to come join the show, uh, post their questions so we can answer them and get some simple recipes. I will see you next week at 1 p.m. Eastern. I will be on time and I'll see you then. Thanks.